As Singapore is growing its pool of local expertise to help tackle rising sea levels brought about by climate change. A newly launched research institute will play a big role in this. Studies carried out will be funded under PUB's $125 million Coastal Protection and Flood Management Research Program. And Claudia Lim tells us more. This tank may hold one possible solution to protecting Singapore's coastline. With a push, this wave is created and hits the shore. Sensors above measure the water level to analyse the impact on the shoreline. Data is compared when vegetation is added to the mix. We know that all of this vegetation can help us protect the coast. The level of protection depends on the species, uh, depends on density, how dense you plant them, depending on the water level and depending on the height of this vegetation. The project Hydro Spins is one of nine which the newly launched Coastal Protection and Flood Resilience Institute at NUS is working on. And more researchers like Assistant Professor Lei are needed for developing such solutions. As a first step, the centre will pool experts from the other local universities as well as ASTAR. CFI gives uh, opportunities where all can come together to form a consortium to solve complex problems. So we are people from engineering, we are scientists, we have even have uh, biological science uh, experts to work on uh, nature-based solutions. The solutions will be critical for Singapore. The country is low-lying and the rise of sea levels will reduce the size of land available for housing, industry and other activities. This stretch where I'm at is where families come together, especially on the weekends, to have a nice picnic or enjoy the beach. But with climate change, all this around me could go underwater by up to 1 metres in about 80 years. And that is why there's a need to plan mitigation measures early, as land is scarce and every stretch of this coastline is highly valued. These mitigation measures will need to suit the local context. It is not possible to always uh, look at what other countries have implemented and to immediately apply in Singapore's context. So that will require us to understand um, how effective some of these solutions are in terms of our local constraints. Protecting Singapore against sea level rise is a new challenge and there will be some uncertainties involved. And if you build too much, too early, it's wasted resources. If you build it too late, too little, you're not going to be in time. The Institute's coastal protection solutions will first be tested in a lab and then piloted on a small scale. The public can also share their feedback on some of these solutions at a dialogue planned for October. National Water Agency PUB will also share the trade-offs and their potential impact on the environment. And we're taking a deeper dive into this. Ho Chai Tek is a deputy director at the Coastal Protection Department in National Water Agency, PUB. He joins us here in the studios. Mr. Ho, good evening. It's good to see you. Uh, some projects uh, seem to be underway already un uh, with CFI. Can you highlight a couple of them that seem to be making progress? Okay. For a start, I think our research need to focus on areas that are unique to Singapore. In that, I will mean that Singapore is basically, we have limited land, highly urbanized, densely populated, and we are pretty low line. So research focused areas must address these issues to help us come up with new innovative solutions. So the first tranche of research projects covers the four key areas that we have, uh, CFI Singapore has set out to do. Number one is to study more about coastal science research. We need to understand if climate change will result in changes to the storm surge patterns, changes to your tidal cycles, where the currents and waves could be affected. Second area is on monitoring and predicting Singapore's coastal environment. We need to know whether are there or the observed trends in actual sea level rise are what they were predicted to be. We need to see whether there are changes to the environment, whether that can help us better able to forecast upcoming events. And finally, we should be able to monitor and track how the shoreline change over time.
So obviously this is a very specialised area, sure. Mr Ho, and not just specialised in the Singapore context, it gets even more specialised for all the reasons you just mentioned. That's right. So a steady pipeline of expertise, very, very important. Of course. To add on, because coastal protection measures take a long time from design to inception, we need to do some studies about it, design it, and eventually do the implementation. So with that, you need a constant group of people to not only do research, but to be on the ground to carry out the work. Mm. Well, efforts to protect Singapore's coastlines have been ongoing for a while now with many measures already in place. And here's a quick look at current defences against rising sea levels. Now, for one, an array of Concrete sea walls and stone embankments stand guard along about 70% of its shoreline. This familiar tourist attraction, the Marina Barrage in the south, is also part of the defense. It's not just an ideal picnic spot. Now, these dam gates help with flood control during heavy rains. Excess stormwater can be diverted and pumped into the sea when needed. Mangroves and mudflats also chip in to break the impact of large waves and storm surges, they're found naturally at around 16% of the coastline. These nature-based solutions are being conserved and replanted as well. The country is planning further ahead too. All new reclaimed land now must be at least four meters above mean sea level. Along the northeast coast, Singapore is building its first polder at Pulau Tekong. Large dikes, 10 kilometers in length and 15 kilometers wide keep out seawater to help reclaim land. Now, construction is halfway complete and is slated to finish by the end of next year. We're well, back to our discussion of, uh, of what we've seen. Uh, Mr. Ho, we've got plenty of hard structures, you know, around our coastline. We have had for some years and we're continuing to see that. We've got Polder now uh, in, under construction at Pulau Tekong. Uh, there is got to be this balance between having natural beaches as well. We don't really have very many of them left. I'm old enough to remember the ones at Changi. Uh, but uh, is there going to be a trade-off? Will we eventually not see any beaches? Sure. I think if we want to have beaches, we need to design around it to ensure that the conditions and the environment ensure, uh, enable the beach to maintain the stable profile over the long term. But beaches is just one of the examples or one of the measures that we can adopt. As you can really point out, Polder is another example. Seawalls is another possible measure. We have quite a slew of measures that we can put in place, but because of land scarce Singapore, we need to, as far as possible, design measures that are multifunctional. So that is where we need to do more research to understand how such measures behave, how they come together, and how they can seamlessly be designed. At the same time, you also touch about the hybrid measures. And this is where it's uh, gaining traction around the world because I think while doing all these measures, we also want to use this opportunity to enhance the marine environment if possible. Uh, rather than just preserving, we could grow new things, integrate nature-based elements into your heart structures so that they complement each other in combating sea level rise. Mm. All these, in principle, this is the ideal scenario where we have the, the, the perfect mix in a way That's of right. how much we should intervene, how much of the natural environment should stay intact. But given that this is fairly new, I mean, you can model all you like, but what makes you what will help you, experts like yourself, decide how we manage in an entire big picture way? Uh, so, so polders, dikes, seawalls, all these things. Sure, that's a great uh, question. That is where the institute comes in to bring in all the best brains across all the institutions and the research institutes to see how we can tap on the best available ideas, compare the trade-offs, which will come best at which location. That's why there is no one-size-fits-all solution. We need different measures and strategies for different sections of the shoreline. Mm. So multiple measures, uh, you know, sort of to sort of try to mitigate all of this, and the natural ones as well. That's right. And the ones that you mentioned, the regrowing of mangroves. We have some mangrove coastline left, but yes. we're trying to replant. It takes quite a while for natural solutions to literally take root. Why are we sort of paying attention to that as well? 
One way to go look at it is that we are using maybe nature against nature. So nature is also something that will enhance the environment naturally. Perhaps uh, that, that's why we need to do more research to understand their behavior and their characteristics better. Whether are they able to self-maintain, self-reproduce and to make sure that they can self-restore after a storm. Oh, thanks so much for coming in to join us this evening, explaining all this to us, Mr. Ho Chai-Tek from the National Water Agency, PUB. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.